Hi guys, this is Magister Gaming here, and today with the Twitch chat, we're going to bring you the second part of the positional guide for the intermediate guide that we're currently doing. So what we're going to start is we're going to start with one unit. This particular positioning guide will be focused on neutral monster positioning. So you know this neutral monster after round 10, so round 10, 15, 20 neutral monster positioning, and also higher tier monster positioning after round 20. So. Just to start off, we have three neutral rounds at the very start. For the first neutral round, any unit can defeat those two. So you don't really have to worry about your positioning. Now it's the next two neutral rounds that newer players can find it tricky. They can find themselves losing to the neutral monsters because they didn't position them properly and because they didn't have the right units. Let's have a look. There isn't any preference because those are all pretty average. So over here, this particular positioning for this second neutral round, round 2, allows both units to share damage evenly. This is quite important because if I want to have a Tusk here and a Witch Doctor here, we can still pass this round because those are solid units. But if you had a Furion or Enchantress or Draw Ranger, you will lose this round simply because they will focus on one unit and they will focus on the next unit. So it's important to remember if you have weak units like Enchantress, 1 star, Furion, 1 star, Draw Ranger, 1 star, over here, you want them to share the damage evenly like this. Yes, this particular positioning guide will be focused on neutral monsters and late game positioning. Only buying a few units, nothing too special. Again, I'm trying to spread the damage evenly across the three units. This way, it's less likely for the enemy neutral monsters or for the neutral monsters to focus one of my particular unit. This is because if I get focused on one particular unit, I lose one third of my damage. And this can add up very quickly. And for me, round 3, I used to lose to round 3 half of the time because I was buying things like Crystal Maiden, buying things like Enchantress 1 star. And Enchantress 1 star, 400 health, 1.5 attack speed. So she attack very slow, she have very low attack, uh, she has very low health. So that means she can't really deal with those monsters. Yes, we do win round 3 very easily, but there are times that I lose round 3 at the start of my game. Very nice. We purposely bought a few units so we can find our 2 stars. And this was discussed in one of my particular guide. It's the mentioning of finding your... It's the mentioning of finding your 2 stars as early as you can to help you have a winning streak. So in this guide, I'll be referring to some of the things I spoke earlier in other guides. Here, this is the positioning. Two of the tankiest, one squishy in the middle. And this is the offensive positioning because we know we're stronger. This is not the position you want to be because you get focused down. By the time your assassin jumped in, this unit would have died like this. So that was a good example of what you don't want to do in the first round of positioning. We are indifferent of the slug or the Batrider. I was thinking of going goblins, but I'm just going to let the RNG take us around. By the look of, by the look of it, the most rare monster is Omini Knight, and he is actually the best one. We don't need to be power leveling unless there's a particular reason we want to, because we know we're still very strong here. So, hello to everyone that is tuning to the Twitch stream right now. Because I'm currently recording a guide for YouTube and for you guys live, I won't be answering any questions until we finish this recording. And this particular guide recording, we're looking at positioning. Over here, he had a little backward positioning, which kind of broke our lineup. And because we had an offensive positioning, we had the best chance of fighting each of the units. We have the offensive positioning because we know we're stronger. This Tusk had a punch and he didn't punch out for some reason. I think the Sniper snipe cancelled his punch animation. I will be trying to win my rounds so we can get to the late game to show you guys the positioning, which is going to be very important. I think for this particular game, it's nice if we curve into the Elves as well. Probably shouldn't buy this Tusk this early, simply because I can't level up now. And I do want to level up. So I'm actually going to spend to double up. Ah, I already have the Enchantress. This makes us stronger. It's alright. What I could have done is I could sell this Omini 
But yeah, this is something small. I forgot I had a little mini. Notice again, we have the aggressive, def aggressive or offensive positioning. This allows us to win fights fairly closely or fairly easily because we know we have the stronger units. We have three two, we have three two star units here. But keep in mind, those druids, although they are two star now, very soon they fall off. It's like cards depreciating in value. It's like a sidetrack thing. Okay. Very nice. We found a conquer. And this conquer is going to be very nice for us. I might buy this. Don't need a mini. Actually, I'll buy everything. So, in this particular round, what I feel like is stronger is actually this conquer compared to this one star fury. Yes, we do lose the evasion, but notice how only 20% evasion. And 20% evasion, you can think of that as 20% buffing HP. This train protector with 20% buffing HP just goes to 1500, less than that. Anti mage with 20% more HP, just 100 HP, so it's not that relevant. But a conquer can change a lot. And I'll be discussing this with my special tier list that I'll be making for you guys, which is gonna discuss the comparison of a two star unit with one star unit. Oh, I really wish I didn't sell that task back then, but it's okay. It happened. We buy some of the value units. This is a good habit to be buy. But at the same time, we can level up because we do have a winning streak. Let's see how much do I have for level up. Perfect. Now we got our evasion back. Also, we got the beast energy, elf energy, and almost a warrior energy. I think the warrior energy is actually much better than the elf energy for us. So, we're fighting on this lineup, and currently we leveled ourselves to level 6 by power leveling. This is to ensure that we have the winning streak. So keep in mind, I haven't been talking about much about positioning because, as I mentioned earlier, I know we're stronger at this stage of the game, at round 8, we're pretty strong. So I have been using our offensive positioning. Axe is not bad. In this particular round, because I have 2 pairs, actually 3 pairs, I'm going to roll once or twice. I rope once, we got a lichen, which is definitely not bad. And no longer do I need axe as my last warrior. Now with lichen, I have three beasts. I'm preparing myself for my druid, long druid that is. And also I'm preparing myself for six elves. So I'm opening up very wide in terms of unit selection, in preference compared to the saving. Because I feel like early game saving can actually be a trap for us. I'll discuss more of that in detail with you guys in the other guides. So very soon is round 10. And this is the first PvE, PvE rounds, the neutral monster rounds we're going to be facing. Nothing special. And again, I'm going to buy units. Because I think it's actually worthwhile. To be having units to combine and having units to find pairs. I think I can stay where I am, maybe swapping the train protector a little over here, simply because the neutral monsters, the rock golems, are going to be a pair, and usually most lineup here can defeat rock golems. I can stay where I am. It's round 15 that's actually pretty tricky. Because I know I'm stronger than the golems, I can position here. If I know I'm weaker, I'll position into a defensive positioning. This is fine. We can actually take damage evenly. We can deal some decent damage. Even Lycan can transform with his armor buff. And notice I have all the buffs on my builder. It's so strange. And here we have the rolling chances, by the way, in case you guys are looking. This is the patch after the update. Perfect. Task. And what's happening? I have too many of random things, it seems. I think a Templar here would definitely outshine the anti mage. And a two star task is nice. I'll swap him compared to the Enchantress. So I'm going to give this one to the Templar and this one to the Conquer. The reason I took the Enchantress back is because I feel after round 10, 
in changes really do fall off. The heal is still relevant, but not as much relevance. But the Templar can really be a good tank. Notice I didn't say damage dealer as a tank, because sometimes she can do magic when she's tanking. When I say magic, not magic damage, but you know, magically tanking for a lot of things. Okay. I will be selling Viper because I want my gold. I want my savings as much as I can without reducing my potential of rolling into better units. Very nice. We are 20 gold simply because I hope we have a win streak. Maybe you want to look at the unit position. Maybe you want to look at the synergy. We can have an elf, but simply because we don't have a two-star elf, I'm not inclined to put the elf. And I think we're still strong and we can take this position. Very soon I'll go to the corner. As I felt, we'll be falling off very soon. So for this particular positioning, we are still on the offense. We know we have the stronger positioning. But notice how this is a three star enchantress. This is gonna be very difficult because she's gonna heal and a three star heal is so relevant. The only thing that can save us is this conquer but unfortunately the templar already died so yeah this is not good because simply our line broke the moment they broke their line as well and this is going to be so close but the clock is so strong against us and the train protect is what's going to destroy us actually so unfortunately we're going to lose this round yeah i should have switched to the side positioning earlier by having the side positioning what it does is it allows the conquer to cast his boat earlier that's so important for us. I'll show you the side positioning now. This is a particular side positioning where it allows this to be the main tank or the caster. This is the secondary tank. This is those that just bruises or tanks. And this lichen is level one, that's why he's here. I will be inclined to be rolling or leveling up if I didn't lose my win streak. Because I lost my win streak, I really don't want to change anything. What I do want to is I do want to sell things now. Enchantress is definitely gone. I need to mess up enough money for 30 gold because I don't have my win streak anymore. And because I'm facing random people, there's always going to be someone that's going to break my win streak. Unlike if I know who I'm facing, then I can really adjust to that. Okay, it's time for a garage sale. I think Luna can go. Sorry, girl. She has been waiting for us for a while, but unfortunately, she's the least impactful out of those. I'm not selling the axe simply because I didn't need the gold. Again, this round, likely I'll be selling the axe. Notice how we're saving quite a bit of gold, even at this level. And notice how the side positioning was working after we knew we were less strong. We went from the offensive to the side positioning. We'll go here if we have a shadow thing that's two star. Or if we have a three star enchantress, we might go here as well. So, round 14. Usually people are saving in those rounds, so we can also be saving. What we have going for us is two two-star tasks. Very soon we have a three-star task, if we're lucky. Very good. Two things happen. Conquer cast his boat, and the lone druid die. But we're still gonna lose because they have four knights. Four knights is so strong in this moment in the game. They also have two two-star trolls. Very unfortunate for us. I'll let anti mage go. He's been here for too long, but he's not finding our buddy. Again, this round, I will try to push for gold. In particular, I will let one of those units go. I think it will be the Phantom. Simply because I feel Phantom is quite overrated. And it's hard to get her to two star. Even at two star, half of the time she doesn't do much. So yeah, let's give this to Templar. Round 15. Guys, this is what I want to show you guys. This is a bit late. So, yes. I think this is fine. Notice how here I have the two units out of tank in this position. The units will jump at them and they are going to be our tanks. I didn't have time to adjust for all of them, but it was fine because I know all of my units are frontliners. Now, if you had backliners like Shadow Thing, Enchantress, or Furion, you want them to be in the backline, while your frontliners to be in the frontline. But those are the standard positioning. What I wanted to show you guys is that by positioning the task here single-handedly, he will bait at least two wolves over here. 
and he will be the main tank over here for us. So it's crucial if you think your lineup is not strong enough against wolves, put your best tank in this corner and then do the reverse position in the front line and the back line. We can roll and we can level up. I think we'll just level up. Simply by leveling up, I think it gives a little bit more because two lichens is definitely better than one. And we're still going to take the side positioning right now. Let's give it to the Templar. No, 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 we don't want to give that to her, that silencer. We do have a Master of Manners now. But unfortunately, it's the Sun Templar. I prefer the Master of Manners to be an anti mage. Let's buy the Phantom. We might win. If we win, we'll, you know, we'll give that to the Phantom. Notice how we curved into like this formation. With good income, but not a good lineup. We are having lots of beasts right now. So that means we're looking at the mid game. I think for well, the beast was slightly changed. No, I think the beast summoning units might be slightly changed here. I'm not particularly sure. But yeah, we're still winning simply because we have a solid lineup. So, right now, we're still taking a side positioning. And here, we'll buy some value units. Let's throw into a pair. Again, we don't need this one. Okay, that's interesting. I can think about those while the game's going. We don't have a demon on the board, so I'm definitely keeping the terror blades. Two queen of pain, I'll keep. Anti mage is just one of him. Really sad, but I'll sell him. Take the trim protector. The last thing is dwell on the viper. See, I make my decision making after buying all the units. Oh, this is bad. This can't get one job. <laughs> that was the summon of both. Oh. Can we kill him? No. Imagine if we had a boat here, that would be so nice. Again, I'll let go of the Phantom simply because I felt that Phantom is the least valuable for me. And yes, we could have had a two Phantom by now, but just two Phantoms. I prefer the income, I prefer the other options. Opening myself very wide right now. Perfect. Ah oh, yes, the Phantom became low. But hey, I am not complaining. see perfect I know it's like a split decision yes I'm still not taking the phantom I know it's a bit strange I have two senses right now I probably should have kept the phantom instead of the viper that was my mistake because I sold it out of habit I forgot I had a viper again for this particular lineup we have switched from the frontal position offensive into the side position because we know it's better if we can we can get the boat off but unfortunately the storm was too much for deck did we get a boat no he died pepper hand but we're strong enough because we planned for this particular lineup one side we planned is that our queen of pain is positioned here so she wouldn't be jumping forward rather she'll stay here and nuke the front line once we broke the front line, the back line is very squishy. Okay, Viper came low. Do I want a Viper? Yeah, let's see what we can do with it. We don't need a shot of in there. Nothing. Let's buy the Enchantress for the gold. Yeah, let's let the Viper go. It's okay. And if we win, we'll let the other Viper go. We probably should let Terrible go as well, simply because we don't have anti-mage. Oh, we don't have anti-mage. <laughs> we already have a demon. This is the demon we want. Because Terrible after round 20 is very underwhelming because he's a single target damage dealer. He's really item dependent. And yeah, this is a lot of other units we can give the items to. So we let go of the Viper. Let go of the Terrible. Even buy a random unit because we're winning. This increase our chance of finding a two star, a two cost unit that is. Notice I haven't been changing my position because we're pretty solid on that. Okay, let's put them down. This is round 20. Round 20 is not a special round, but rather we just want our units to tank damage evenly. We don't want the queen to be jumping to the back line, simply she will get killed with zero armor. So I position my assassin ranger assassin here. We do want this temp. 
front end to be jumping to the back line. So nothing going to be very special on round 20, simply because we just want to tank evenly. We don't want her to die. See, we can try to tank evenly because we know those are words they can tank first. And this conquer is perfect. So the queen jumped, but not right, not right at the start, which is great. So she had a chance to deal some damage while well, the rest of mine is did some damage. And <laughs> we got nothing as well. Again, we're going to be rolling this time. I'll buy the phantom. Definitely keep her. Uh, take the queen. Uh, not really the best things I want to see, to be honest. I do want this tree. Ah, I didn't see the phantom. Oh, not good, not good, not good. Mistakes were made, guys. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Should have stopped this guy. Let's roll a bit. The reason I'm rolling for elves or beasts here is I really want to find my trim protectors or my three stars before I go to the next level. It is risky, yes. Sometimes it does pay off in the form of a three star druid. But here we're reversing a beast lineup, and this is when our Queen of Prince positioning and her damage really shines here. I just want to say that she died. <laughs> okay, we can see how much the Queen of Prince does first over here. And yes, I'm not playing the top rated games at the moment because there's a few things I want to explain, and I'm not the best at multitasking as some of you have called up. Hey, no, wrong one. Hey, hey, hey. Out of time. Don't be like this. No, 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 no. No. I'm favoring a lichen. Simply because we already have a lichen. I do want the razor, I do want the task. But yeah. Remember, this guy is on positioning, so I'm not paying the most attention to my unit composition. I just want a good composition that will take us to around 35 or maybe 40. That'd be excellent. We are facing some of the strongest cloud units as well. So that doesn't help. <laughs> I know. No excuses, right? We have not been rolling into the units we want to see. Which is really annoying. Oh my god. This is so annoying. Okay, we'll do something here. Let's go to level 8. Simply because I do want this one, and I'm okay not having this one because this just means more change for me. I want the Furion because I want another Furion so we can have a chance of getting the 3 star when we get a long druid. Round of the train protector is just so useless first. What's important right now first is the Conquer and the like it, and that's all, and the Queen of Pain that is. And we'll be losing now. I mean, at 59% at this round seems to be okay, relatively. But we could definitely be better though. Yeah. Oh my god. Thank you for coming, buddy. Let's roll a few more times. Thank you. Excellent. This really boosts our AoE damage. I think very soon we'll have to let the task go. I'm still using the task simply because yeah, the train has to swap with them. Simply using the task because they have the additional armor. And they can be a little tanky, but as you can see, versing those, they're not that tanky. Oh, that queen. That boat is excellent. Queen? Mama scream? No, she died so fast that she couldn't scream. That's okay. Oh, I was gonna say, I probably didn't want to buy the Sand King to waste my gold. Can't get screwed. This is the moment you just go, I have to take this guy. There's nothing to say about it than just, you have to take him. We're stacking our AoEs, which is not bad for us, simply because we don't need the Demon Synergy, which is the pure damage. We do like the pure damage, 
Okay, I forgot this is the round 25. But yes, one thing I want to highlight is round 25 is actually one of the easiest neutral rounds you can find because a hub is a range unit. And because of that, you really do not need to be worried about this that much. If you are losing to the harpies, that means your lineup really needs a power up because almost 90% of lineup can defeat the harpies. Okay, that's a queen. Another queen. Okay, the fear is definitely falling off here. Mm, I have to hop the task. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, let's give this to the tree. Let's give this to the tree. I do want the task. And we're very close to the queen. Let's let the Sand King go. He was a placeholder for our three assassins, but after round 25. The access is not that relevant. What's really relevant is AoE damage. Let's have a look. One more? No, we got a storm off. If we had one more, maybe we had a chance. So sad. And the tree blinked away. Okay. Please that let us leap to round 35. Ah, uh, Techies did come. We don't need Techies. I just buy him because he's so nice first. When we play Goblins, that is. We got a queen? Okay. Again, we are not the strongest lineup right now. I'm simply placing it here so we can get most of our AoEs off. Other than that, I wouldn't place him here. And what I'm literally looking for is my pairs to match. This is the mage lineup. Definitely not going to be nice for us. Ooh, that Lich cast us so early. And the Shadow Fiend didn't even get his spells off. So unfortunately, I think for this particular replay, we won't make to round 30. Oh, Sand King came. No, we had a Sand King. Sand King. Uh, let's see. I do need to sell one, yes. I'm planning to sell the Shadow Fiend to get the most of my assassins. I can't get this one back, that's fine. Right now we're actually in a bit of pickle. I'm gonna let the Lycan go because I can't fit him anymore. Yeah, this is fine. If we can AoE them out, it's great. If we can't, we're in trouble. Ah, uh, the Storm is the end of us. The boat came a little late, but once the boat came, we had a solid chance. Well, the 3 star CK is not something to be messed with, I think. Unfortunately, I think it's likely we'll die before our time. I really don't want to do that. Trying everything I can to survive first. One more conquer is actually what we needed. Just a little bit of AoE damage. Yeah, in case you guys didn't know, playing single player is actually much harder than playing multiple players because no one's helping you to find your units by denying the other units you don't need. And you're always first some of the strongest players on the cloud on the internet. So we are versing some of the stronger players. And yeah, we got one boat off. We're supposed to get one more boat off. It's actually quite difficult to reverse players in a single player mode. It's actually a bit of a challenge to get to 35 if possible. What I'll do is I'll find a video where we'll have round 35 and explain that video to you guys as well for that particular part. Unfortunately, we can't seem to find a queen of pain. That's rough. No. Okay, this is round 30. Round 30 are the lizards. For the lizards, you really want things that are tanky or things that can get the spells off in the front. We do have things that are tanky because of the warriors, and we have things that can get the spells off. So the Sand King can stun, while the rest can be tanky. So what's going to happen is you're going to get attacked, they're going to jump. The jumping is great for us. See, they got mana, 
and they can cast their spells off. Usually you don't want a single target here because you will be singled by the lizards. You really do want multiple targets here so the lizards don't focus fire. Because the lizards have 600 damage and 0.8 attack speed. That means if they focus fire, it's 1800 damage every hit. And that's so deadly. Oh, Phantom's too late now. Conquer, Enigma. Oh gosh, quite task. Hello, Conquer. So poor, we don't have any money anymore. What we do want is something to tank up for us. Let's give this to the fan. Yeah, let's give this to the Phantom Assassin. Oh, not Phantom, the Templar Army. We do want this one. The downside is we actually wear. We can use the this. We also want the Long Druid. This is going to be so close if we can make it to round 35, but I don't think we can. Because each round we're actually facing some of the top players in each of the recorded cloud games. But take the Enigma because this is a safe bet. Again, with the positioning, I'm positioning in such a way to help with assassins. Notice how my assassins need a solid frontline, those are my frontline. And this way, when my assassins jump, they are not the high focus. The key focus for the enemy is actually going to be my frontliners which are all tanky or so other than tanky with the warrior they're great because they can get their spells off and this train protector has flink dagger so Sand King can soak enough damage with his tank armor and he can AOE stun the enemy but of course the downside is things like those like you find some of the strongest players on the internet and that's not where we really want to be see that's our boat and assassins Combined with the boat is really strong. But the problem is, is that our boat or his boat? Okay, this is his boat. I was gonna say the problem is those three stars. <laughs> the good thing is we have assassins, the bad thing is we can't deal with three stars. No. Okay, this is the end of this part. Hi guys, this is Magic Gaming here. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it to round 35 with our lineup. And because of that, we were doing a single game, single player game. Single player games are much harder usually than multiplayer game, simply because you actually verse some of the best players that's recorded in each of the games. They're recorded for a reason, and they're some of the best lineup for that round. It was very unfortunate we couldn't make it. That's why I'm going to show you guys the round 35 and round 40 with particular lineups. I think this is a good example game to show you guys something more to that as well. Okay, two things I want to point out. Round 35. We're versing the Black Dragon. The Black Dragon is going to be here. What's going to happen is the Black Dragon is going to hit the first two monsters that's going to be here or here or here. So it's going to hit the first three monsters that's here. If there's more than one monster here, let me move this away. If there's more than one monster here, what's going to happen is you will prioritize on this unit, then those two units. And the Black Dragon does a big splash damage. What does that mean? That means if the Black Dragon hits this unit, it's going to hit this one, this one, and even this one. Keep in mind, it's got a massive value. I think it can hit up to something even here. So if I had a unit here, you might even splash onto it. But I'm really sure you will splash onto the Dusa. The Dusa is positioned here, so if it hits the Timber, technically it should hit the Dusa as well. So the Dusa gets some mana. The moment the Timber moves to attack the Black Dragon, because Timber is a melee unit, the Black Dragon will change target. So the idea, the, the idea is to have the Black Dragon hit only one unit here and nothing around unless you have things like an Enigma, you have things like a 2-star Dusa that can absorb enough damage and get the spells off. Let's have a look what happens here. I need to mute this. Let's have a look. So we're going to be facing the Black Dragon on this run. Here, see the Black Dragon hits the Timber? And AoE actually hits the Dusa and almost it hits the Bounty Hunter. Does. It's a massive AoE. So the moment, notice how the Black Dragon stops hitting, it's going to change target. This gives enough mana for the unit here, Dusa, to get a spell off. What I should have done is I should have put the Enigma somewhere here to get some damage as well. But unfortunately, the Black Dragon changed targets and we only stunned the Black Dragon after it changed Dusa. Enigma's here. So 
it can be risky putting Enigma in the first cleave zone because it might just get cleaved to death. And unfortunately, because it's a one star Enigma, if it's a two star Enigma, I'll have him here or here to be just cleaved right next to it. But having a one star Enigma is actually nice if he eventually gets his spells off. This does not guarantee you win the round. They guarantee if he gets his spell off, the unit will die. Unless you have a tiny that toss him around. So here we got an Enigma off and we'll kill the Black Dragon. Relatively nice. We didn't have the best lineup for the Black Dragon because we didn't have techies on this one. So after this round, I want to show you what I'm doing. So right now in this game, I'm searching for techies. I want to show you the formation I have. So I did want to touch on some of the late game formations as a bonus for the positional guide. For my late game bow positioning, I have my assassin in the back line for sure. I have my Dusa not in the back line, but rather in the second line. This is because regardless of one star dudes or two star dudes, I want her to be in the middle to be exposed to most of the enemies. And regardless if she's one star, two star, I'll give her all my damage and mana items so she can get her spell fast. She's here, not here, because here, this is where assassins will kill. Assassin kills all the backline. Having my assassin or any unit in the backline means it's likely my assassins will be fighting before they try to attack the dudes. Because they will fight back, the dudes won't fight back. Having the units on the left and right corner means I want those units to get their spells off, but I don't want them to die that quickly. The Lone Druid is fine because he doesn't have armor. If he's in the middle, he'll die too quickly. If he's here, it's likely he only takes one or two instances of damage. Enigma is here because I'm taking a gamble. I'm taking a gamble because I'm betting on it. If Enigma doesn't die, it's great and we get a spell. If, she di if he dies, it's okay because I'd rather prefer Enigma to be here than someone back here and never gets anything off. Because we need something that changes the round first, fast. Not something that waits for like 20 seconds and gets the spell off and half of my team is dead. The positioning of the timbers is so we get the most AOE out of it. But the main leader here in the late game to be the left and right bodyguard for one star initiator. My initiators are Tide Hunter and Disruptor usually because they can cast spell instantly. That's why I felt instant cast is so important. So most of the time as a one star Tide with not many items, you actually want something next to it simply because they, they will take this and this instant of damage. So Tide is open to the frontal damage and whatever's behind him. Let's have a look in this round. I actually haven't checked this round, so it's actually going to be exciting for me as well. Let's see. Well, if he's a dragon player. Again, the Tide didn't receive a lot of damage. He received just enough to get his spells off. Notice how the two bodyguard received that much damage. Imagine if the Tide was just here by himself at level 1. He will receive way too much damage for his own good. We were very good on the Londra. The Londra got a bit off. Unfortunately, the human silence got the enigma silenced, so he wouldn't be, be casting black hole anytime soon. But if he could, and notice how here, Dusa is this position. Although she didn't get most of the enemy, but the Dusa did get her spells off because I did give a lot of items to Dusa. Now I'm gonna go forward a little bit. So we didn't change our position that much until this round because we found techies. Let me show you this round. And yes, I'll be uploading this particular videos for you guys as well. This is before the Goblin patch, by the way. So this is when Goblins are the weakest. So notice how I still have my Dusa in this particular position. And here, what I want to show you guys is, usually I take a judgment call. Do I need more damage or do I need the survivability of techies? In this particular matchup, I felt the need of techies to do damage first. Having him in the front line means he's susceptible to a lot of the enemy damages front line, on the side, and from behind. But knowing that he's got enough armor with the goblin buff, he should technically just get his bomb off. But half the time he might not, because it's anti-mage, because enemy tied or the, the disruptor gets the spells off. Because I'm worried about the enemy disruptor, having him here means he almost always gets stunned by the tide or the disruptor. Having him here, there's a chance someone hits him, he gets his bomb right before they get their initiating off. And again, the tide is protected by two units. Let's have a look. And again, I didn't check the replay beforehand, so this is going to be exciting for me as well. Disruptor, you see. There's a disruptor and tide. Tide? No, 
Unfortunately, the tide was just one second too slow. And the Dusa was also caught in the storm. So what I should have done is I should have put Dusa to the side. And for that particular one, too many of my units were caught up in this, which was not good. But let's keep a little bit. This is a particular round. This is a very interesting round. I'm going to stop over here. In this particular round, we're going to be facing trolls. With the trolls, you really do want something that can AoE stun, which is a Dusa. Tide is not a guarantee at one star, but the Enigma is so crucial here as well. We have a good chance against the trolls because we have some of the tanky goblins with nanobot armor. We also have a good long druid. We really want a good front line so that the enemy will actually hit them instead of my assassins. Here I'm readjusting my units so I have the best potential to defend the troll. And yes, I did take the tide hunter back because I didn't feel that the tide hunter was good enough to do the initiate. Let's have a look how we deal with the trolls on this particular one. Let's go back a bit. The Enigma is here because I didn't want to risk Enigma being killed by the trolls right off the start because I know they will be so tanky and tanky can get almost two bombs off. And the Dusa gets her off. Perfect alignment. So notice how when Dusa get the stone gaze off, the bomb actually does 30% more damage, which is not bad. And here, it seems like they're actually pushing in. This is when the Enigma can be really handy. But unfortunately here, we didn't have some of the stronger units. And again, this was not the best attempt against trolls because we didn't kill enough trolls. Let me show you what I should have done here. What I should have done is, I should have put this enigma in a corner. I think I was too busy about switching the position of the techies instead of putting enigma to the corner. Over here, or even where the clock is, there's a higher chance of enigma being attacked just by one troll. This gives us enough mana to cast the spells off before the trolls really dig into us because we're tanky but the enigma doesn't gain mana as fast and our core units are enigma and do so and everything else is going to do flat amount of damage even the queen of pain and we need pure damage and we need disables for the trolls so yeah we didn't do too well on this one and hey guys this is manchester, manchester gaming here unfortunately i was looking through my video replays i was looking for around 45 to show you guys what does the round 45 do and how do we deal with it in this particular replay we found it on youtube as you can see and we just found a random one what i want to say is this monster here the round 45 boss is very similar to the black dragon it does massive aoe but this time it is actually milling instead of range so what does this mean is for this particular player he moved all his unit back what that means is the monster can't actually hit any unit at the start and then once the unit jumps in, it's going to hit on one side, but it won't cleave everything around him. That's how he goes over here. Let's have a look. So yeah, here's the year beast. And as you can see, it is a melee monster. And in this particular replay, this is actually a really old replay. What happens is the year beast is not attacking simply because he's got humans. And humans used to not silence, but rather disarm. But for this particular one, what I want to show you guys is not the whole thing. Right? I want to show you guys how can we defeat this monster. There's a crucial unit that you need to defeat the level 45 and level 50 boss, which are very similar. Level 50 is a Roshan. This is a Year Beast. They're just all melee units with high HP, high damage. But what we do is we need at least a one star Enigma. The Enigma, as I mentioned earlier in the run, for in the round 35 against the dragon enigma wants to be cleaved but not massively so you can have one particular front line maybe one or two in on the side if you don't have a two star enigma don't get cleaved because probably the one star enigma will die but if you have two star enigma if you're positioned over here you'll still be cleaved by the monster you gain some mana and cast your spell really fast now if you have a one star enigma just put him somewhere away so let him attack slowly and eventually you'll get the midnight pulse up this should guarantee a good 50 percent damage on the monster usually a lineup with any disables like a viper a lineup even with a venomance so now can deal with the single target really nicely with the reduced attack but if you do not have enigma a lich can help witch doctor shadow shaman and the disruptor can help with the instant hex so in this particular one, I'll let this one finish. What's going to happen is it's going to permanently disarm this monster forever. Which is, disarm is not that useful except for this particular case. And he did get a raven with this one. 
and yes I'm gonna post it here I'll let this video go so I'm gonna make a conclusion the positioning for the neutral monsters is important not only do they reduce the HP we lose if we lose the round it also helps us to have the best best chance of finding items because for each monster you kill there's about 20% chance of the monster dropping an item before round 20 and afterwards I think at round 35 when there's only one monster boss there's a high chance of you finding items there's a hundred percent chance of you finding items there's a high chance of you finding a very nice item and for any neutral monster that's before round 35 even at round 35 are literally still not bad because chain frost not only does damage chain frost also slows the attack speed of the monster and that can be very crucial so yeah, thank you for tuning in for this part, second part of the positional guide where we look at the positional for the PvE monsters and we will also look at a softman's position, positional decisions I made while during a particular single game. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and thank you for your support for liking, subscribing and you know saying hi on Twitch and sponsor me on Twitch with sub, with following. Thank you guys so much for all the support and I'll see you guys next time.